Jamahal Hill has broken his silence regarding the controversial non-stoppage by referee Herb Dean during his fight against Alex Pereira at UFC 300. Despite the outcome not going in his favor, Hill remains composed and pragmatic in his response. Addressing the situation on his YouTube channel, Hill emphasized the importance of protecting oneself at all times in the octagon. He acknowledged the opinions circulating about the stoppage controversy but emphasized his commitment to learning and growing from the experience. Despite potential criticism about his approach to promoting the fight, Hill remains focused on moving forward and continuing his journey in the sport. Hill said this, I took no damage. Most of the fall was me falling down. I remember everything. I remember looking up, seeing his legs. I remember him coming in, trying to block, trying to reach for the underhook. He was able to land some shots and kind of throw my equilibrium off on the other side, but I was coherent the whole time throughout, for the most part. So, I take this on. We moving forward. Reflecting on the fight itself, Hill mentioned that he took minimal damage and remained coherent throughout most of the bout. He seems undeterred by the setback and is already looking ahead to his next challenge in the octagon against Khalil Roundtree Jr. at UFC 303 on June 29th. Hill's response demonstrates resilience and a determination to learn from every experience, showcasing his maturity as a professional athlete. Luke Rockhold's return to the win column was an emphatic one, as he secured a third-round knockout victory over Joe Schilling at Karate Combat 45 in Dubai. This win marked a significant milestone for Rockhold, his first in combat sports since his 2017 knockout victory over David Branch. Throughout the bout, Rockhold showcased his diverse skill set, mixing kicks with takedowns to keep Schilling off balance. Despite facing adversity in the second round, where Schilling landed a powerful right hand that bloodied Rockhold's nose, the former UFC middleweight champion maintained his composure. In the third round, Rockhold found his opening and delivered a clean right hook that dropped Schilling to the canvas. He followed up with ground and pound strikes, securing the knockout victory. Reflecting on his performance post-fight, Rockhold emphasized the challenges he faced leading up to the bout, including dealing with an infection and having only three weeks' notice. However, he expressed satisfaction with his return to competition and acknowledged the importance of testing oneself in different arenas. After enduring a three-fight losing streak in the UFC and a subsequent bare-knuckle boxing defeat to Mike Perry in BKFC, Rockhold's victory at Karate Combat 45 signals a promising resurgence in his career. Dana White didn't shy away from addressing some of the most vocal critics of UFC 300 in a post-event video montage. Despite initial skepticism about the fight lineup, UFC 300 turned out to be one of the most memorable cards in the promotion's history, featuring thrilling matchups from start to finish. The BMF title fight between Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje exceeded expectations, culminating in a dramatic knockout victory for Holloway in the final seconds of the fifth round. Additionally, UFC light heavyweight champion Alex Pereira delivered a spectacular performance, finishing Jamahal Hill in the first round of the main event. Following the event's success, White took the opportunity to clap back at those who doubted the card's potential, showcasing the record-breaking $16.5 million gate and the venue record attendance of 20,067 patrons at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. As the UFC gears up for its next slate of events, including UFC Fight Night on April 27 and UFC 301 featuring a flyweight title headliner in Rio de Janeiro, White remains focused on proving critics wrong and continuing to deliver top-notch entertainment for fans. Israel Adesanya's bold bet on Devin Haney to win by knockout against Ryan Garcia certainly raised some eyebrows. While Haney was favored to win the fight, his lack of recent knockout victories added an element of risk to Adesanya's sizable wager. Haney's recent fights have all gone the distance, indicating that he may not possess the same knockout power as some of his opponents. 
However, with 15 knockouts in his career, Haney has demonstrated his ability to finish fights, albeit mostly against lower-level competition. However, tonight's Haney vs. Garcia bout proved to be an absolutely thrilling back-and-forth affair. Ryan Garcia was able to drop Devin Haney on multiple occasions, and that proved to be the difference on the scorecards. The Dream did find a lot of success between rounds 2 and 5, but Ryan showcased his resilience and came back to dominate the final three rounds of the fight. Unfortunately, Adesanya lost his money betting against Ryan Garcia. Max Holloway's victory at UFC 300 was indeed legendary, but it came at a cost. Despite his spectacular knockout of Justin Gaethje to claim the symbolic BMF title, Holloway didn't escape the fight unscathed. During a gaming stream on Kick, he revealed the toll the bout took on his body, particularly his leg. Responding to a fan question about his leg condition after absorbing over 30 leg kicks from Gaethje, Holloway candidly shared the extent of the damage. He displayed a badly bruised leg, wrapped up from the fight, indicating that while it was improving, the bruising was still apparent. Acknowledging Gaethje's reputation as one of the fiercest leg kickers in MMA, Holloway praised his opponent's power and resilience. Despite enduring significant punishment, Holloway managed to persevere, showcasing his toughness and skill throughout the fight. Ultimately, Holloway's ability to withstand Gaethje's leg kicks and deliver a stunning knockout in the final moments of the bout solidified his status as a true MMA legend. The rematch between Kyoji Horiguchi and Sergio Pettis at Ryzen 47 is set to be a highly anticipated showdown, especially considering their previous encounter at Bellator 272. Horiguchi, coming off a decisive victory over Makoto Takahashi and capturing the Ryzen flyweight gold, will look to avenge his loss to Pettis. Their first fight showcased Horiguchi's dominance until a stunning knockout by Pettis in the championship rounds turned the tables. Now, with both fighters facing off again, there's a chance for redemption and a shift in momentum in this highly competitive bantamweight division. For Pettis, this bout marks his return to the Ryzen ring after a significant hiatus since his victory over Pitbull in Bellator. Despite losing his bantamweight title to Patchy Mix, Pettis remains a formidable opponent with the skill set to challenge Horiguchi once again. The matchup adds to the excitement of Ryzen 47, which also features other compelling fights I. Fight fans can expect an action-packed event on June 9 in Tokyo. Steve Ursig's upcoming title shot against Alexander Pontoya at UFC 301 has raised eyebrows due to his rank and relatively short tenure in the promotion. Nevertheless, Ursig embraces the opportunity and acknowledges the element of luck that led to this chance. His agreement with Pontoya's assessment of his luck underscores his gratitude for the opportunity. Ursig's path to the title shot has been marked by impressive performances, including a notable knockout victory over Matt Schnell in his last fight. While his ranking and recent entry into the UFC might raise questions, his prowess inside the octagon cannot be denied. The decision to grant Ursig the title shot, despite being ranked 10th, reflects the UFC's desire for fresh matchups in the flyweight division. With previous contenders like Brandon Royville and Brandon Moreno not considered for a rematch against Pontoya, he emerged as a viable option. Regarding other potential contenders like Amir Albazi and Mohamed Mokayev, injuries and performance outcomes played a role in the selection process. Ursig acknowledges the UFC's decision, recognizing the importance of offering fans new matchups and variety in the division. While Ursig's title shot may surprise some, his readiness to seize the opportunity demonstrates his preparedness for the challenge ahead. As he gears up to face Pontoya in Rio de Janeiro, he remains focused on making the most of his chance to capture UFC gold, despite any initial skepticism surrounding his candidacy for the title.
Bilal Muhammad's frustration with the delay in booking a fight against Leon Edwards is understandable, especially considering his recent dominant performances in the welterweight division. The back and forth between Muhammad and Edwards, coupled with Dana White's remarks about offering Edwards multiple fights for UFC 300, has only added fuel to the fire. Muhammad's eagerness to face Edwards on his home soil in Manchester adds an intriguing layer to their potential matchup. The prospect of headlining a UFC event in the UK, especially after the long hiatus, is enticing for both fighters and fans alike. He said this. I probably have more fans in Manchester than he does, nobody cares about him. Me going out there on his home soil and beating him in front of that crowd over there would be amazing because, I went to London for a UFC event once and the crowd energy was nuts. I was like I have to fight here in the UK. For me to be able to go down there, people are going to doubt me even more and that doubt does nothing but fuel me. That'd be the fairy tale end to my story to get his belt in Leon's home country. However, the delay in booking this fight raises questions about matchmaking and communication within the UFC. Muhammad's determination to secure the fight and his confidence in his ability to defeat Edwards only heighten the anticipation for their eventual showdown. As the MMA community waits for an official announcement regarding UFC's return to the UK and the potential matchup between Muhammad and Edwards, the excitement continues to build, and fans eagerly anticipate seeing these two welterweight contenders finally face off inside the octagon.